Good morning, Arabians. Each and every year we head back to school in August, filled with hopes and promises. We want to help you fulfill those dreams, so Mr. Rose and I have compiled a video to help you review the student handbook so that you are informed and can stay in school and focus on your goal. All students can access a digital copy by going to the Pendleton Heights High School website and clicking on About Us, and then clicking on Policies and Forms. There you will find a digital copy of the student handbook. In addition, seniors, because you have not received a Chromebook, you have been given a paper copy of the student handbook. You are guided by your student handbook, but come on, it's 80 pages! So we've compiled a top 10 list that often is overlooked in the novel you are expected to read. These are the most common rules overlooked. Let the top 10 begin. Number 10, public display of affection. No one wants to see it, and if you take it too far, I mean way too far, you can be suspended and or expelled according to rule number 26A on page 59. It's a crime too. You could be charged with public indecency. Number nine, profanity. Offensive language could be disrespectful to your peers. Be respectful to others, especially the faculty and staff. Using profanity toward a staff member could lead to suspension and or expulsion according to rule number 26E on page 59. Number 8. Away from assigned area, better known as skipping. If you leave school, skip class, or take over the normal amount of time to go to the bathroom, they're going to notice. The most basic and simplest expectation is that once you are here, you go to where you are assigned to go and you go where you are given permission to go and nowhere else for safety reasons. Once you arrive at school, you are to stay on campus all day on pages 43 through 44 under late arrival early departure procedures. It states, should a student find it necessary to leave the school for any reason, he or she must receive permission from the building principal or his or her designee before signing out. If permission is given, the student must then sign out and sign in immediately upon his or her return to school. Students who do not follow this procedure will be considered truant and dealt with accordingly. The common overlooked rule includes not going to nearby businesses after you arrive to campus in the morning. We don't want to send you across a three-lane highway in the dark to get smoked by an unaware driver. We just want to keep you safe. The other common overlooked rule is that we do not have an open campus for lunch. Even if your parent or guardian says it's okay, you must be given permission by the principal and you must sign out as stated on page 44. Number seven, harassment, bullying, threats, and intimidation. You've all been educated through middle school on what bullying is and what's socially acceptable behavior. Just be kind. No one wants to come to school and feel unwanted or unsafe. We're all on the same team. Don't beat each other down. The rules are well covered on page 57 through 59, 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E, 2, 3, 7, 8, 19, 22, 23, 26B, and 26E clearly cover these actions and make them suspendable and expellable offenses, and there can be criminal charges as well. And wait, there's number 9. If you witness, you are obligated to report. Number 6, dress code. Page 49 states what you're not supposed to wear. If the dress code on page 49 says no holes above the knees that expose the skin, then that is what it means. Don't make this harder than what it is. When you follow the dress code, teachers can focus on helping you reach your goals and you can stay in class without the unexcused absence for a dress code violation. Number five, fighting. Did you think you are going to get away with this? I mean, if your intent is to hit and hurt, I mean, tear him up, don't you think someone might notice the black eye or the blood? Then, leave it to your so-called buddies to record it so we have all the evidence we need. Use your head, not your hands. We are here to help you through conflict and come up with resolutions. You're not alone. We do it every day, whether it's in our offices or the counselor's office. Don't do something you might regret and get hauled off to juvie. This, of course, violates rule number six on page 56. Number 
four, drugs and alcohol. You cannot come to school under the influence of either drugs or alcohol. You cannot have it in your possession, including your vehicle, and if you pass it along to other students, regardless if you sell or give it to them, you can be expelled for an entire school year. This includes storing it for your buddy because he was afraid he was going to get in trouble. Of course he's going to get in trouble. He brought weed to school. Number three, cell phone usage, cell phone etiquette. Now that the cell phone has been around for over 40 years, we should know when to use them and when not. But it's hard. I get it. They can be addicting. But what is great is your teachers help you by posting signs, big signs, so it's always clear. Even further, crimes can be committed on your phone. Yes, crimes. Be careful what pictures and content you bring to school and exchange. Inappropriate content floating around on your phone can disrupt the school day, and we have the right to search it, just as we have the right to search your locker or vehicle. Devices should be used for educational purposes while at school, such as playing cahoots, recording a video, or taking pictures for a project. Not hacking into the Chromecast and displaying explicit messages, aiding and cheating, or making fun of another student. Those will be a violation of number 19, 21, 22, 23, or page 58 through 59. Number two, tobacco and e-cigs. A large majority of you are under 18, which makes the possession of not only tobacco, but e-cigs illegal. Most of you know tobacco is illegal, but under the state statute, e-cigarettes are considered tobacco and are treated as tobacco in the eye of the law. So ask yourself this. Should you do something illegal at school? Of course not. Students are suspended three days for the first offense and leads to expulsion very quickly. In addition, if they are under the age of 18, they receive a $200 tobacco ticket. This is covered under number 14 and 28 on page 58 and 59. Number one, attendance. How can we help you if you are not here? Each semester, a student gets nine days, as long as your parents are aware, to miss school for any reason your parents deem excusable. If there are medical circumstances that are going to cause you to exceed nine days, come talk to Mr. Rose and me. So here's how it works. If you miss one class period more than nine times, you get pulled from that class and placed in a study hall. So the tenth absence gets you removed from the class and placed in a study hall. Once you accumulate a total of three study halls, there is a request for you to be expelled for one semester. Often, what is overlooked is that tardies can be counted as absences. 20 minutes late or more to first period is considered an absence, and 10 minutes or more to second through seventh period is considered an absence. Also considered an absence is leaving 10 minutes or more for an appointment at the end of class. We want to help you stay up on your work and not get expelled for violating the attendance policy. Arrange appointments during different class periods. Make an 8, then a 10, then an 11.30, then a 1, and utilize after school time. Also schedule appointments during summer, fall, winter, and spring break. Thank you for your time, and we hope this helps you see and understand some of those commonly overlooked rules so that you can stay in school and focus on your goals. Welcome back and best wishes for a happy and successful year. And remember to take pride in yourself and the Arabians.